Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm back on the, the new cabin build. I've had to be off of it for about uh, four and a half months uh, working on the Gillum House, the restoration that we did. And I'm thankful to have that phase of it done that I did and back on something that's new. It's not, I enjoy doing the old restorations. There's a lot of challenges in that. You just have to work your way through those, those different things that come up. But I'm back on the new cabin and I've, I've got some things I need to do. I'm kind of playing a, a catch up. I um, started out, I get the angle irons and the openings here and I've got the half log still to put in underneath and uh, some other small things that I've got to do and I've got rafters coming from the sawmill so I'll be starting to top this thing out. So hang with me. This is uh, a two inch by three inch angle iron. It's quarter inch thick and what I do with these you can see that this three inch flange has been cut off and I left the two inch flange and the slot that I cut in the header logs this will slide up in there and there will be a, a, a distance of space here between the top of the three inch and the bottom of the log which will allow for the settling and this part of the angle iron, this flange will be cut into a curve in the ends of the logs and it will let the logs slide down and not, not be any hang ups or, or anything happen to them, they can just settle straight down. Okay, I've got the angle iron in this window, which is on the front of the cabin. And it may be a little difficult to see, but there's a space between here and the log which will allow for the total settling. And the angle iron is cut into the kerf in the ends of the logs. And at the bottom, I cut a slot this way, and a little bit deeper right here, and I put it in and let it slide down into this kerf here that I make with the chainsaw. And that keeps these logs here from any movement from side to side. They're in there good and solid, but yet they can settle straight down. I put a straight edge on the inside faces of the logs and lined them up with the header log and uh, the bottom log here so that they're pretty flush on the inside and then up here where the kerf is that I, that I cut with the chainsaw I plumbed down from one side of it or the other and just marked a, a plumb line on the ends of the logs and I'll cut that about two inches deep all the way down and then I'll make my little cut here so that the three inch flange of the angle iron can settle down into uh, the lower log which will keep that nice and secure. Okay, I've got my saw kerf cut up through there and down 
and I cut into uh, this log right here. Get over here where you can see. I had to cut a slot this way to accommodate the uh, the three inch part of the slant, uh, flange. I cut just a little bit of this corner off right here because uh, when I cut this slot right here, since the end of my chainsaw bar, the tip is round, this is rounded down, and if I just uh, left this end here square all the way out, I wouldn't be able to get it to uh, slide down into the, to the slot that I've cut for it here. There it is. I've got the clearance that I need here. There's already been some settling take place over the past few months right here coming down. So I still have the clearance that I need right here for the rest of the settling that will take place. Uh, it's hard to determine exactly how much it will be, but there'll be quite a bit. There may be some question as to why this flange is offset to this side. And the reason that I did that, the part right here that goes up into the log, that's pretty much in the center of this header log. To actually center this in the face, I would be so far over that it would, I, I feel like it would be weaker than having this, this flange here that goes up in the center of the log, which you have approximately the same amount of wood on either side of it. Now what I do, when I put the sub jam in, I'll drill through at the, at the chinking gap and I'll go just, just off of where that flange bends back and goes back into the, the ends of the logs. So I'll, I'll put a screw, a, a tech screw through the uh, wood and into the metal in this area right here. And that definitely will hold uh, the two to six sub gems. Okay, I've got all of the angle iron in the openings and all the, the door and the, the three windows. And I'm getting ready now to put the sub jams in. And these are six inches wide, uh, two by actually inch and a half thick. This is some stuff that I milled out of some timbers that I had left over from another uh, project. With the price of lumber now, all that I can save, I'm going to use what I've got and just use my Alaskan mill to mill things out. So I'm going to anchor these in to the angle iron. And what I'll do is put a, a two inch torque screw through the jam and just behind where the elbow or the bend is in the, in the angle iron. So I'll be about two and a half inches in from the uh, inside edge of the angle iron and I'll run the torque screw through the sub jam and into the, the metal and I'll put I'll do it at the chinking gaps only I don't want any thing going into the log itself I just want to have the screw go in at the bottom part of the of the opening there the chinking and that way I won't have to worry about the end of that screw hanging the log up as this settles down have these marked at uh, two and a half inches from the inside, which will miss the, the elbow or the turn of the uh, angle iron. I'm just to the inside of that. And what I'm doing, I'm going to pre-drill a smaller hole through the wood and through the angle iron. And it'll just make it that much easier when I run this tech screw in, because sometimes you hit hard spots and 
in the steel and uh, it doesn't want to drill real good so I'm just going to go ahead and run a pilot hole through here with my drill to make it a little easier to run that torque screw in. Okay, I've got my hole in there. I can just take my impact driver. And I've got it in. And I can take this clamp off. And I can mark this one and drill it. Okay, I've got that side anchored in. You can see the uh, settling area, the settling space that I've got up above it, which now is about two and a half, two and three quarters of an inch. Uh, there has already been some settling take place uh, over the last few months. But with that set up there, the logs themselves can come straight down and there's nothing to bind them. They'll slide on that, that angle iron everything will stay in line. I didn't mention it, but uh, I did take my level and put my level on there to make sure that I had the jam plumb. It's pretty close with this edge here being flush with the top of the header log and the bottom, the bottom log where the window cutout was or is. So these logs will be able to slide down without any problem. Now, because they're, they're sitting on blocking, which keeps everything in line, and they're, they're in line with the corners for in and out. If you remember, I put a string across here on the center line, and I had my little round dowels, and I used that against the string to bring the ends of the logs at an opening out to where they're supposed to be in line with the, the corner. It just keeps everything running nice and straight. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up. My pencil is on the end of that screw, which is sticking through the metal just a little bit over a quarter of an inch. And you can see it's just sitting right at the top of this log. And that will allow this log here up above it to have some settling space there. I cut this out just a little bit so that I could actually show you that. I'll go up here on the next one up here at the very top that screw is just just the point of it sticking through the threads it has good threads in the metal but the the tip of that screw is just at the top edge of this log which this log won't have to worry about when it comes down it'll have some settling room